Good morning. Oh, I just love the sound of that. Don't you? Just to hear the congregation all together. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. Mm, music to my ears. Thank you for being here today. We are so grateful to have you in worship. And uh, welcome those of you joining us online as well. As always, we begin with a few announcements because we are an Easter people. That doesn't mean we just celebrate it once a year. Um, that means we live in the form of Easter. And we're gonna talk about that more in worship, talking about identity and, and the unique form of worship we get to do. But um, I just want you to put a little bookmark if there's something that resonates with you. Um, just feel free to act on it, okay? Um, the first is if you're a guest with us today or watching online, whatever, um, we wanna reach out to you and connect with you, see how we can serve you best. So. Uh, if you'll text welcome to 308 730 4040, that'll help us uh, serve you. Uh, similarly, we do the old school connect card in the pews or in the back next to the offering plate as well. Whatever works best for you, again, so that we can serve you best. Um, that's also a great way to share your prayer requests, whether it's a, a long one, a personal one, a short one, or um, maybe for something going on in the world. We would love to join you in prayer. We do that every Tuesday at 12.05. Now, for the couple of announcements we're lifting up this week, we still got a busy week coming up here. And there's a lot more going on, but we're just going to look to this week. Um, the first is our plant sale, supporting our kids' first preschool, um, wraps up this week, essentially. So uh, orders are due by April 11th. There's some forms on the back table. You can download it online, uh, whatever works best for you. Maybe, maybe. Now, I know there's a lot of green thumbs here in the room. But maybe you're a little bit like me and can't really grow anything except grass and maybe a few weeds. Um, if that's you and, and plants aren't really your thing, there is an opportunity to support the preschool coming up next month. We'll be receiving our mission offering for the preschool through North Platte Giving Day. And that really helps, uh, that really helps in some other ways as well, partnering with the uh, foundation in that way. So just an opportunity to support kids first. This Thursday and Friday, we're Feeding the Hungry. That's our local mission. Uh, we can do a lot of things, but we do this thing really well because we, we can cook. We know how to cook. So anyway, uh, if you'd like to help serve, it's as simple as showing up. Um, but if you have questions or, detail, or, or want additional details on how to help, just contact us in the church office or use that number to text, whatever works best for you. But yes, we're going to serve this Thursday at the Connection, Friday at the Salvation Army. And speaking of food, I need to speak to all of the men in the room just for a second. Women, you can balance your checkbook, I guess, if you want. Um, anyway, we have a men's breakfast coming up. Uh, the first time we've really done anything like this in my almost 10 years here at the church. And so we're really excited. I think there will be a little bit of a message, an opportunity to just chat and connect, which is great as well. Um, there might, um, I think there's going to be breakfast, yeah. I don't think we're going to spend a lot of time talking about emotions and that kind of stuff. We might talk about the way we feel about bacon, you know. Would that be okay, Pastor Mike? Yeah. All right. So uh, I just want to invite you all. It's next Saturday at 8. Uh, and we should be about an hour. Um, just want to try this out and see if we can't connect and serve the men of our church as well. So that's what we have for announcements. It is a beautiful day. Let's join our voices together. Good morning. You missed it. Good morning. Good morning. Bien vendidos. Denise has been teaching me some Spanish. We just said welcome in Spanish. All right. Denise, get up here. Rescue me, please. Let's join our voices in our call to celebration. Our scripture or call to celebration today is from Psalms 139, 13 to 19. For it was you who formed my inward parts. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Nothing was hidden from you when I was made. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. Oh my. Amen. Will you remain standing for our first hymn, How Great Thou Art?
You may be seated. I would invite any kids that are with us to join us for our children's time. We are trying to bribe people in the front row with suckers, and I still couldn't get her, but I guess. How are you guys today? Did you guys have a good Easter? Did the Easter bunny bring you any chocolate? Did you bring any of that to share with me today? What? You ate it all? Oh. All right. Can somebody tell me what this is? A pencil. What's wrong with this pencil? Holly? Two erasers? That's not going to work very well, is it? Can you read this for me? Can you tell me what it says? Life without Jesus is lifeless pencil. No pencil. <laughs> Perfect. It says life without Jesus is like this pencil. There's no point to it. That's pretty cool. So, pencils are, are fairly simple. You guys think you could make a pencil? Just not sure. All right, let's, let's talk about what, what things do you need to make a pencil? Lead or graphite in these or wood, okay? A metal to hold this piece on there. What else? The eraser is on there. Somebody had to make the eraser. Is this the color of wood? A wrapper or paint, yeah. Well, we think of a pencil as being pretty simple, but there's lots of different pieces to it, aren't there? It actually probably takes about 150 different people that participated in making this one pencil. From the people who mined the graphite, to the people who cut down the tree for the wood, to the people who mined the ore for the metal, to the people who made the eraser, and then the machines that put it all together and painted it, there are lots of people involved in making one pencil. Today in our scripture, we're going to talk about something that Jesus made as well, that God made, that's really special. Do you guys know what God made that's special? you. God made every one of us. He made us completely unique, not like anyone else in the world. But we're going to hear in our scripture this morning about what God made us from. And so I want you guys to listen in the scripture today. And if you can remember what it is that God made you from, come tell me after worship, okay? But always I want you to remember just how special you are, that God made you just to be you. Would you guys share a prayer with me. Can you repeat after me? Say, Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for making us special. Help us, Lord, to always reflect you and show the world just how much you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well done. All right, you guys can come up and grab three suckers, one for you and two to give to other people. Denise just called me a piece of dirt. <laughs> well, to be more precise, she said, Micah, you're made of dirt, so... Just to be clear. Today uh, on the altar, we have uh, flowers from John uh, Patterson. Thank you. Uh, Patterson's memorial. Um, we also did Shirley Turner's service this week. Um, but one of the things Miss Edie was telling me about before his service is how much John enjoyed the joy of worship and uh, being able to not always take ourselves so seriously. No hard feelings. I, I'm not, I, I get it. It's all right. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but, you know, as, as passionate and as helpful as church can be where Jesus meets us in these serious and sincere moments, God is also the God of joy. And so 
Um, that was just a really good segue. Thank you, Denise, for calling me dirt. Um, anyway, <laughs> I need to get back on track here. Last week, we had many additional services, but we went all out, you know, joining the band and the choir together. It was a great set of services. In the midst of it, though, somebody came up and asked me, or didn't ask me, they just came up and said, Micah, I did it! Did what? <laughs> I wasn't exactly sure what, where this was going or what was going on. And, and anyway, they said, well, I did it. I made it all 40 days. Now, I hadn't really talked to this person about what they were doing spiritual discipline-wise throughout the season of Lent. I assume it was some sort of fasting, which we didn't really emphasize as a church, but they decided to do it anyway. They felt they needed to go above and beyond, and they did. And what they ended up telling me in the midst of this conversation was how blessed they were to be able to, uh, to experience God in that way. It's something they had never done. And they admitted, I didn't do it perfectly, but I still felt God's presence. And when we show up, when we participate in ministry, when we go above and beyond, which that's what this is. You know, most of our community is sleeping in right now, which is okay, you know, fine, but... There's a, an above and beyond portion to what's happening right now in our lives. To come together, to talk about what's happening spiritually. It makes a difference in our lives. And that's what this person was saying. The mission and ministry made a difference in my life. And not just because it was out there, not just because we announced it from the stage or whatever, but because they decided to step up and answer that calling God had put in their life. It's just for a short season, but it made an incredible difference. And so... Uh, as always, when we talk about giving, the, the thing that kind of comes up is, uh, well, do I have to, whatever. Well, it's not about that. It's about going above and beyond and experiencing God in those blessings, in those midst of sacrifices. God does an incredible work. And so I invite you to give as you have been called to give. You can give online. You can give in the offering plates that are in the back. Um, you, can, you can stop by and say hi while you drop your check off or whatever works best for you. The point is, when we give, we see God. And that's what this person found out while they were fasting. That's what we find out as we continually give. And so we're going to continue in our worship now. We have a fun uh, gospel number that the choirs worked up together. So let us continue.
I would like to clarify, I did not say those things to Micah. I was referring to what Pastor Mike was teaching, and I mentioned God made you from dirt. That's all I said. He took it very personal. <laughs> I heard you're made from dirt. I said God you're made you from dirt. dirt. <laughs> That's what I heard. I think we really, I think he needs prayer. So <laughs> let's get to it then. <laughs> Um, let's go ahead and take a moment to pray. We're going to pause for a moment of silence, and then I will lead you in a prayer, and we'll finish together. Heavenly Father, we come before you, and we acknowledge that you are so good to us, that you are so loving, so caring, and you're always faithful. Uh, we want to go ahead and just give you all the honor and all the glory because you are the only one deserving of it. Lord, we, we struggle. We struggle a lot through various and, dif and different things. There are so many things going on in, in our lives and there are so many things going on in the world. And we sometimes have a hard time and we get lost in everything that's going on and we forget that you are with us all the time. And sometimes we forget to acknowledge that we are made by your image and we are so valuable to you and we thank you for it. Help us remember constantly that you made us and that we are your treasure and that you love us. And in that way, we can just handle life the way you want us to handle. Thank, thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit because it guides us all the way, every step we take. Help us always be kind to each other and never forget that you are with us and that you are taking care of us. Lord, also, I wanna go ahead and just lift up any prayer requests that are going on in our church. There are, there is sickness, there's um, struggles, it could be anything, but we know you are in control. And we thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for just being so good. Thank you for giving us the chance to gather together here to praise and worship your name. And thank you for all you do and everything you're doing in our church. And I'll invite you to pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll invite you to stand for our next hymn. It's number 147, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
Amen. As we continue in worship, we'll hear our scripture lesson for the day from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. In that day, Lord God made the earth and the heavens. When no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no vegetation of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're going to take a second to greet one another, and I'm going to give away the message title here, I Was Made for This. I guess we'll find out what in a bit, but let's greet one another in saying, you were made for this. Those of you joining us online, as always, we are grateful for your presence. We know you'd be here if you could, but uh, nonetheless, you are here in this way, and we love it. Uh, if you're watching today and you haven't commented yet, go on ahead and say, I was made for this. We'd love to see you interact in the comment and use those like and share buttons. That's always helpful as well. If you need to share something privately, go on ahead and use the message button there um, right on Facebook, and we'll be able to attend to that as well. As always, we are grateful for you. We're grateful for your presence uh, in church and in worship this way, and hope to see you next time. Take care. We are so thankful to have everyone able to join us in worship, whether here in person or online today as well. When I was growing up, one of the places I loved to be most of all was the treehouse in my backyard. Now, I was a tag-along child, eight years behind my sister, ten behind my brother, and so lots of the things I had were really hand-me-downs. Some of the clothes I wore, some of the toys I played with. I remember, I think the first cassette player I ever had was something my sister handed down to me. And, and every time they would give me another cassette tape, I thought I was cool. The kids today don't even know what a cassette tape is. <laughs> but it turns out that, that my treehouse was really a hand-me-down as well. See, years before, my brother and dad had built this playhouse in the backyard. And for my brother, the whole goal was to have a place that was finished that he could call his own. My approach was way different. The treehouse was a project, always a project. I would decide I needed a window in this space here. I would decide that I, I had to change something about it. I'd put a trap door in somewhere. Or I remember when I decided I was going to build a second story on top of my treehouse, and it was cool until my mom saw me out the window. <laughs> Wasn't as exciting all of a sudden. My dad even helped me put in a zip line from the treehouse to another tree across the yard. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world until you fall off of it, and then it's not as cool anymore. But I, I loved the new project. I loved having something different all the time. Today's scripture is kind of a story of creation as well, how, how God created humanity, the greatest of all his works. And I felt like it was the perfect place for us to start this new sermon series today, sermon series titled True Identity. See, our culture is, is really obsessed with identity right now your race, your, your gender, your political affiliation. And the thing is, there is this innate need within us to understand who we are and where we fit in the world around us. Ironically, that desire comes from a place where we want to belong. And yet those categories that the world gives us are often what causes division. But I think the real question behind the question of identity, <laughs> it isn't what am I, who am I, but what am I here for? In the end, what is it that my purpose in this world is? 
And the chances are, at the end of today's sermon, you're you're not going to have every one of those questions answered. Maybe not at the end of the series either, And, and I think that's okay. Because the journey of discovering our true identity is a lot like my treehouse. It's never completely done. I don't think we can ever truly understand who we are this side of heaven. But if you want to know about your purpose, if you want to have a better understanding of those pieces, it starts by looking at the one who created us. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time unpacking the Scripture itself. The creation stories of Genesis 1 and 2 are are incredible and beautiful and theologically deep. We could spend hours discussing it and, and still not unpack every piece of it. My confirmation students will tell you, I I usually spend most of the first month just talking through Genesis 1 and 2. But I did want to focus in on on the verse that we ended our scripture reading today, verse 7. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. I love this verse because it points out just how special we are. If you look back in in Genesis 1, God speaks everything into creation. God says, let there be light, and there is light. God speaks, and the planets are formed, the ground, and, and the land, and the seas. God speaks the plants and the animals into creation. But in today's verse, there is an intimacy. We didn't just poof, exist, God made us in a different way. That picture of the God of the universe knelt down on the ground, getting his hands dirty as he forms us. And and he doesn't just speak us into existence, he breathes the breath of life into us. Oh, Oh, what an image. Now, whether you take those verses literally as I do, or, or you see them more figuratively, the intent is to show that, that there is this intimacy and this intentionality about us. Not just Adam, but every one of us. I think it's important to start our conversation there, because we, we are not an accident, We are not just from chance or circumstance. And whether you find yourself more drawn to to the description in Genesis 1, 26, where where God says, let us make humanity in our image, or, or today's verse where it talks about God breathing life into us, it is meant to remind us that you are special. See, I don't believe that the intent of these verses is to talk about what our physical bodies are made of. It's talking about where our essence came from, where our, our personality and our spirit and our soul come from. It is a reminder that we are uniquely made, and the numbers prove it. Now, I have to confess, I am not great when it comes to math. I I can do general math things pretty well, but when you start getting into upper-level mathematics, I don't get it. I have to confess, the only reason I was able to pass calculus is because Wendy tutored me every single night. The irony of it is that my daughter-in-law is going to graduate in May from UNK with a degree uh, in advanced mathematics. (laughs) And she wants to be an actuary when she graduates. I had to look it up. I didn't even know what an actuary was. (laughs) It turns out that's the the people who do all of these incredible mathematic figures for investment companies or insurance companies to assess risk. See, I'm one of those people that when something crazy or unlikely happens, I say, what are the odds? Emma's the kind of person who starts to figure out what the odds of that really are. Have you ever 
watched one of those crime shows like NCIS or CSI, and, and they talk about having a DNA match. I mean, we've been taught all along that our DNA is unique, like our fingerprints or other pieces, but the math behind it is really incredible. Now, I'm no expert, but I want you to look at this equation. See, we all have 46 chromosomes, 23 from each parent. So the odds of getting the exact 23 chromosomes from each person is 0.5 to the 23rd power, one in 10 million. Combine that with your second parent, and the odds of having an exact DNA match are one in a hundred trillion. That's pretty incredible. (laughs) Even identical twins that that start out as one egg and split, because of the, the genetic anomalies that happen in the womb, the chances of having an exact DNA match are mathematically incalculable. But that's just our DNA. When we start talking about what really makes you, you, it is so much more complex. Our hopes and our dreams, our passions and our desires, our skills, our our personality, our sense of humor. When we say that that there was no one who has ever existed that is exactly like you, it's not just a saying, it is true. The thing is, being unique isn't really a virtue, it's a responsibility. You ever heard someone say, you are special, just like everyone else? There's irony in this statement, but there's such a beauty in it as well. Even though we were all uniquely made, unlike anyone who ever was or will be, our true identity rests in Jesus Christ, just like it does for every other person God created. Author and pastor Mark Batterson says it this way, you were created to worship God in a way that no one else can. I think we miss that in our world today, even in the life of the church. Sometimes we look at situations and and we get asked to do something and we go, I'm not the right person for that. Somebody else has more skills for that. Somebody else is better equipped to do that. Someone else has more time to do that. And yet the reality is no one ever could do it the exact same way you do it. You were that unique. The the problem is sometimes we miss that. We get so focused on the uniqueness that we forget our purpose. Our society will will tell you all the time to just be yourself. And on the surface, it, it sounds like such great advice. If we spend all of our time worried about wanting to be like that person who can sing better, or that person who's more artistic, or that person who can speak better, then we never truly embrace who God made us to be. We are always disappointed when trying to be someone else. So easy to fall into the trap of comparison, but when we strive to be someone else, we, we can't embrace who we are, who God made us to be. Batterson goes on to write, he says, all of us start out as one-of-a-kind originals, but too many of us end up as carbon copies of someone else. The thing is, we, we can't reach our full potential or, or find our real purpose if we're trying to be someone else. 
I, I don't want you to mishear or, or misunderstand this idea of uniqueness, though. Being unique is not a license to do whatever you want and claim, well, that's just who I am. <laughs> There are too many people in our world today that use their unique identity as a reason to not change. But God has something bigger in mind. In the end, the question is not, who am I? It's, who does God want me to be? Who has God made me to be? That is such a different question and brings us to a very different conclusion. I love the way that the Apostle Paul writes it in Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Our life's pursuit, it is not to simply embrace what is. It's to discover what could be. And nowhere is that more important than our identity. I love the masterpiece language in that verse. The artistic ability of people just always amazes me. Ah. I have never been very artistic myself, but I have such an appreciation for it. When I was 10, 11, 12, I don't exactly remember, my family took a trip to Washington, D.C., and one of the stops we made was the National Art Museum. We hadn't planned on staying very long, and, and I think my parents looked at it and went, our 10-year-old's going to be bored, so they planned for us to move on. But we ended up spending most of the afternoon there and then going back the next day. I was amazed by every picture, every sculpture. And I really think that trip is, is where I got my appreciation for art. If I ever have the chance, one of my bucket list trips is to go to Italy and visit the museum in Florence. See, that's where Michelangelo's famous statue, David, comes from. It is considered by many to be the, the most magnificent sculpture ever made. Michelangelo spent more than four years carving this incredible statue. But what's amazing is this eight. 18-foot tall block of marble was abandoned by an artist 50 years earlier because he said it had too many imperfections. <laughs> Michelangelo looked at it and said, no, there is a masterpiece inside. All I have to do is get rid of the extra stone and David will be free. See, the thing is, he... He didn't see what was, he saw what could be. He didn't see the imperfections, but the masterpiece inside. Now, I would love to see the David statue because it, it seems like it is such an amazing experience. But I am just as fascinated with the hallway leading up to the David statue. It is called the Hall of Prisoners. It is filled with statues that Michelangelo began to make for one of the popes, but never quite finished. You could see in the pictures there, there's an arm sticking out here, or a leg protruding there, or a hand, or, or a torso that, that seems to be coming out of the stone, like a prisoner trying to escape from this rock. And those bizarre and fascinating unfinished works of art, they, they give a new meaning to what Michelangelo says. I think a, a new analogy for us and our faith as well. See, when Jesus 
began his ministry, one of, one of the first stories we have in the Gospel of Luke, is Jesus returning to his hometown and going to the synagogue there. And he was selected to be the one who reads the Scripture for the day. But Jesus sees this as an opportunity to share with the world what his mission is, why he has come. And so he, he quotes a scripture from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. Maybe you're like me, and I, I have always read that scripture and said it, it's all about being set free from sin. That's true. But Jesus doesn't doesn't forgive our sins so we can keep on sinning. Jesus offers us this forgiveness so we can become who we're meant to be. We are forgiven not to do whatever we want, but to fulfill our calling. Patterson goes on to say it this way, Jesus didn't die just to get us off the hook. He died to resurrect the person we were destined to be. <laughs> Our world seems filled with voices right now that, that are screaming at us about who we're supposed to be what we're supposed to believe, where we're supposed to fit. We find ourselves so, so often identified by, by our job or our roles. <laughs> but that's not the whole story. Yes, part of our identity might be that we are a husband or a mother, <laughs> Part of it might be our career, that we are a teacher or an accountant or an actuary. Part of it might be that, that we have a gift as a quilter or a musician. And all of those are, are part of our identity. But it is not our purpose. If we aren't careful, those labels... They start to be like stone that entraps us. We never get set free for what God really intended. Yes, God made every one of us completely unique, but for the same purpose. We are here to worship, to honor God, to share the gospel and to make a difference in the world around us. We should never forget that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that we were made just for this. What a gift. What a mission. What an opportunity to beat the church. Amen? Would you pray with me today? Gracious God, we, we are so thankful for all that you have done. We are so thankful for the way that you uniquely made us and for your son who came to save us. God, as our time of worship comes towards an end and, and we get a chance to celebrate communion together. Let us see the true meaning in this as, as more than just a ritual, as more than just a reminder, but as a challenge to embrace the gift we have been given, the unique calling and personality we have and the true identity you have written for us. 
Lord, we ask you as we come here to, to once again pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us and on these gifts of bread and juice, that they may be the body and blood of Christ so that we can reflect Christ to the world, truly becoming the image of God, redeemed by your great love. By your spirit, Lord, we, we ask you to make us one with Jesus, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world so everyone can know how uniquely made they are, how special you see them, how you have called them to an incredible mission. We ask you, God, to to be with all of us in this ministry as, as we wait for your next coming, for the time that we will all get to feast at your heavenly banquet. We ask all of this, God, through the name of your Son, Jesus, who with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, we give all honor and glory to you, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We are here today because of how God created us and how Christ saved us. How on the night he gave himself up for us, he, he took bread and broke it. Not just to forgive our sins, but to set us free so that we could become the masterpiece that he intended for us. We are here because Christ said there is a new covenant sealed in his blood. A recognition <laughs> that all who would come before and all who would come after are intended for this gift. That we are all unique but connected in Christ. We are here because God has called us to an amazing mission, a chance to be the church in a new way. I want to invite those that are helping serve communion to come forward at this time. And I'll share a brief word of instruction for those of us here. Obviously, online, uh, we can't serve through the camera, so we just invite you to sing along and pray. For those of us here, um, after our servers are set, we'll have two stations uh, up front, you'll be invited by our welcome team down the center aisle here and uh, let them know you're ready to receive by placing your hand in the shape of a cross. If you need a gluten-free option, just say so. They'll uh, get one of those here. And then you'll take that and dip it lightly in the cup. And then we invite you to eat. Uh, this method is called intinction and we invite you to participate. Um, you're welcome to kneel at the kneelers and then eventually return your uh, self to your seat and join us in prayer. Join us in singing the hymns that are on the, on the screen and follow along there. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church in order to receive. All we ask is that you have that desire in your heart to seek out that purpose that Pastor Mike was talking about. That purpose is found in worshiping Jesus. And so uh, with that, I think we're almost set here. I'm going to invite Mary Lynn to begin our hymns and we'll continue in our worship. Spirit filled yet hungry, we await your food. 
We are poor, but we've brought ourselves up so we could be. We are yours, we are yours. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts. We love you, take our lives. Our Father, we are yours, we are yours. To meet my Lord, forgiven, loved, and free, in awe and wonder to recall his life laid down for me, his life laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find as all are fed the new community of love in Christ's communion bread in Christ's communion bread as Christ breaks bread and bids us share each proud division ends the love that made us makes us one and strangers now are friends and strangers now are friends and thus with joy we meet our lord his presence always near is in such friendship better known we see and praise him here we see and praise him here Together met, together bound, we'll go our different ways. And as each people in the world will live and speak his praise, will live and speak his praise. Jesus calls us to worship, and so as we end our worship today, I'm going to back us up to the first song we sang, How Great Thou Art. I'll invite you to stand as you are able. We'll lift our voices together and sing the first verse and chorus of How Great Thou Art. I'll invite our acolytes forward. 77, How Great Thou Art.
Amen. As we prepare to leave this time and place of worship and go into a life of worship, just a few quick reminders. The offering plates are in the back. Uh, we're trying to wrap up our pictorial directory, so if you haven't submitted a photo or had a photo taken, this is kind of your last week before the printed edition. My wife, Wendy, will be in the back to help take photos if you'd like that. We talked about ways this week that you can serve, that you can fellowship, but all of it is a way that you get to live that unique purpose God has given to you. Go from this place, living as a one-of-a-kind masterpiece, warning everyone to the one-of-a-kind God who loves you without end. Thanks for worshiping today. <laughs>